Last July, I was here in Manila to attend that uh, Lausanne conference. And again, I come this time to conduct meeting here in Manila. And I always feel great freedom and happiness whenever I meet Filipino Christians who are so freely worship the Lord in their love and full of emotion toward the Lord. I wish I could imitate you. <laughs> Tonight I want to speak about our faith in Heavenly Father. My scripture reading is from Mark 11th chapter, verse 22 through 24. And Jesus answering says unto them, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he has said shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he says. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that you receive them, and ye shall have them. Jesus Christ always loved to stay at Bethany. Bethany was a very downtrodden, poverty-stricken town. And Jesus Christ always enjoyed to become friends with those people who were living in poverty-stricken area. And then in the morning, he would always go to the Jerusalem to preach gospel. Throughout the gospel of Jesus Christ written in the Bible, he had never stayed even one night in Jerusalem. He always would come to the Bethany and he would just stay there. Then next day he would return to Jerusalem again to carry out ministry. So one day, in early morning, he took his disciples and he was going to Jerusalem without eating breakfast. He was going through Bethany, through the mountain of the olive tree. Then, on the way of going there, there was uh, many fig trees. And uh, some of the fig trees were full of the leaves. So naturally, Jesus Christ just went toward fig tree and he tried to find some fruit. But there were no fruit in the fig tree, but there were a lot of leaves left. And Jesus Christ said to the fig tree, Fig tree, nobody shall ever take fruit out of you from this time forever. And Jesus Christ just said casually, and also disciples of Jesus Christ didn't pay much attention to his command. And they went to Jerusalem, and evening they came back to Bethany, and they rested there. And next morning, early morning, they got up and they went to Jerusalem again on the way when they were just passing by the fig tree which Jesus Christ had cursed. And the tree was completely dried up from the root. And Peter was quite astonished. So Peter said to Jesus Christ, Jesus, the fig tree which you cursed last year, yesterday is completely dried up. Then there Jesus Christ stopped his uh, travel and he began to explain the principle of faith. And Jesus said to his disciples, Truly, truly, I say unto you, have faith in God and whosoever say to this mountain, be removed to the sea and believe in his heart without doubt that whatsoever he says shall come to pass, then he shall have whatsoever he says. And through his teaching, we can gain a tremendous insight about the principle of faith. Many people do not have working faith in their lives. And also quite many people come to me and say to me that they don't have even a faith. But you know, the Bible says God has given a portion of faith to each and every one of us. So when we become Christian, we already have faith according to the measure of grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
But we should know how to exercise our faith. And to exercise our faith, we must learn from Jesus Christ. Number one here, Jesus Christ said, have faith in God. This means that we should take God as our total resource of our life. If we have faith in human beings, then human beings has a very limited resource and we can't have greater miracles beyond the limit of human ability. But once we have faith in God, then God is eternal God, omnipotent, omnipresent, and omniscient. And when you have faith in God, then you take God as your resource. Then you can go far beyond the reach of human ingenuity or human limitation. Then what kind of God do you have tonight? Bible says God created heaven and earth. And we should believe in God who created heaven and earth. God created the light. God created the heaven. God created the earth. And God created all the fruit-bearing plants and trees. Yes, God created the sun, moon, and stars. God created birds and fishes. God created all the insects and the animals. And finally, God created human being according to his own image and likeness. So God is a creator. God created everything out of nothing. She is Almighty God. All the creatures are created by the hand of God. So we must believe in God of creation. Nothing shall be impossible to God. God can create anything out of nothing. There's a reason once we have our faith in God, then we can expect miracle to happen. If you don't have this kind of God in your heart, then you can go beyond the limitation of human being. In 1958, when I started my pioneer work, I did not know about this God. I was terribly limited by my own training and ability. And at those days, my only desire was to have 300 members in my church. That was my uttermost goal. And I said over and over again to God, Father, if I could have a 300 members in my church, I will not complain till my black hair turn into white. That was all the desire that I could have. But as I began to know our God, and as the faith in God began to grow, and I began to rely upon the mighty power of God, then my faith began to rise up, and I can have a bigger vision and a greater dream. So knowing God as your creator, and taking that God as your resource of your life is very, very important for the enlargement of your faith and your vision and your dream. And we should know about God more than that because our God is Redeemer. As Adam and Eve rebelled against God and Adam's generation so far until now mostly have been rebelling against him. And people are all going to hell because people left the God and their spirit died. But 2,000 years ago, God loved this world so much that he gave his only begotten son, Jesus Christ. Jesus, the perfect God, became the perfect human beings. And God and human beings walked among the human beings. And Jesus Christ revealed and manifested the love of God and power of God to the humanities. And finally, Jesus Christ went on the cross to redeem human persons from the eternal destruction. Jesus Christ voluntarily went upon the cross carrying the, all the liability of human beings. Jesus Christ took your sins and my sins and your iniquities and my iniquities and he carried those things on his shoulder and he took the responsibility and he received the punishment from the Lord, God Almighty. And he 
took away and canceled away all of our sins and iniquity. Without being a righteous person, you cannot stand before God. God will never permit sinner to stand before him. And you can never become a righteous person by your own good deed. We are all born sinners and we have committed so many sins that we are unrighteous, we are filthy, dirty sinners, and we can't stand before God. All the religions under heaven, they are instructing people to live a righteous life, to stand before God. But nobody can accomplish righteousness through their own good deed. But Jesus Christ in our place died and purchased the righteousness by his shed blood. And nowadays, when we put our faith in Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ freely gives us the righteousness. Righteousness means that you have never committed your sin at all throughout your life. I want to ask you a question. Is there anybody who has never committed sin even once in your life so far? If there are those persons, please lift up your hand. Boy, I see uh, so many sinners here. In my church at the service, when I asked my people that if there were any person who did not commit any sin throughout their life, one lady lift up her hand. So I asked her to explain about this, the situation. How could she live without sin at all in her life? She stood up and says, Pastor, I'm sorry. I was just dozing off. And when I just heard that you ask people to lift up hand, I just lift up hand. <laughs> so actually, truly, there are nobody under heaven who could accomplish this kind of righteousness. But through Jesus Christ, God gives us a free righteousness. So by putting in faith, you become a forgiven, righteous person tonight. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. So God wants to give you the righteousness through Jesus Christ. And also God wants to be reconciled to you through Jesus Christ. God loves you, so God wants to be reconciled to you. When Adam rebelled against God, there came down the enmity between God and human beings. And there was a wall of enmity between God and human beings. No one could destroy that wall. But Jesus Christ took the enmity away on the cross. So through Jesus Christ, God is now coming to you as your own father. And God wants to be reconciled to you. And God wants you to come and be reconciled to himself. So God will become your God and your father. God is a good God, and God loves you, and God wants to give you good things. So through that reconciliation, tonight, God is giving you His Holy Spirit to you. And also, God is God of healer. God is a divine healer. God wants to heal you. Sickness and disease are coming from sin. When Adam and Eve committed sin, then God said, you shall return to the dust. So actually, sickness and disease has root in the sin. But when we are forgiven by the blood of Jesus Christ, then naturally we can claim the divine healing to our physical body. Of course, when Christ returns, then the final enemy to be destructed is death. While we walk on this world, we will not be delivered from the final death until the return of Jesus Christ. But still, till Jesus Christ returns, we can be healed. Jesus took our infirmities and carried away our sicknesses. So, actually, you have been healed since 2,000 years ago. Jesus Christ already paid the price for you 2,000 years ago. The sickness problem has been solved since 2,000 years ago. Just that uh, believing is left for you to do. When you truly repent and believe, then the divine healing is yours because you have been already healed and you are claiming the healing which God has already given you 2,000 years ago. God is a healer. God wants you to have a healthy physical body. 
Then also God through Jesus Christ took away your curse. God cursed this world because of Adam's sin. God said, earth shall produce thorns and thistles. Think of life walking on the thorns and thistles. But so many people are living on the thorny patch. They build a beautiful home, but the thorns and thistles rise up, and then life is in home would be miserable because of the hatred and the fighting among the couples. And when we start our business, then thorns and scissors rise up, and we begin to walk on the thorny patch, bleeding all over, failing. Who can take away this curse of thorns and scissors? But God wanted to bless you, so to legalize God's blessing, God sent His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, and let Him take all of our curse, all of our thorns and scissors. So Bible says so clearly that Christ was cursed for you and for me on the cross. Christ has been cursed for us so that he could take away all the curse of Adam and Eve. In Galatians 3rd chapter verse 13, clearly says, that Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written that cursed is everyone that hangs upon a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon Gentiles. You and I are Gentiles, but we are entitled to have the blessing of Abraham in our lives. Why are you going to live on the thorny patch? Get out of the thorny patch and come to the land of Abraham. We are the Honey and milk flow. When I was pioneering my church, I was so poverty stricken that I did not know from where I could have next meal. I only had one suit, and uh, I was living from hand to mouth. But at those days, I did not know that God was supplying all of our needs. I thought that being poor would be a being holy. So to become a holy, I almost starved to death. But one day God opened my eyes and revealed this truth to me, that it was God's will for me to have prosperity for the glory of God. Not for the glory of my own personal ambition. And when I found out that Jesus Christ already took away all the curse from my life, and when Jesus Christ has to, took away all the failure from my life, my faith rose up from my heart, and I said, Oh God, from today, I'm going to live in the land of Abraham, in the land of blessing of Abraham. I'm not going to live anymore on the thorny patch. No more would I live in the failure. I'm going to live in success in Jesus Christ. I made a sure determination, and regardless of all of my circumstances, I believe in goodness of God. I believe in the Word of God, and from that moment, God delivered me completely from the curse and abject poverty stricken situation until now. Now I'm being blessed. I'm living under the blessing of Abraham, and all of my Christians are living under the blessing of Abraham. When you believe, you can taste the goodness of God. When you don't believe, then you can't experience this blessing. Then again, God, through Jesus Christ, destroyed death and hell completely. Jesus Christ died and he was buried. And on the third day, he was resurrected, destroying all the death and hell. So today, Jesus Christ is being seated on the right hand of God as an eternal victor. So through Jesus, we have also conquered death and hell, and we will never go to hell because we have victory in Jesus Christ. What kind of God do you believe in? Our God is a good God. Our God is a redeemer. Through Jesus Christ, tonight, God wants to redeem you from sin, from enmity, 
from sickness and disease, from curse and from death. We have such a wonderful God and we should have this knowledge and we should believe in such a God and take this God as our life resource. Jesus said, trust in God. I trust in this kind of God. I don't trust in God who curses, who punishes, who sends us to hell. Traditionally in Korea, we were priests like that. But uh, through the revelation of the Bible, I've been delivered from those kind of uh, deceit. God is a good God and Jesus Christ is a good Jesus Christ. And since I believed in Jesus Christ this way, I've been completely delivered from the sin, from the enmity, from the sickness and disease and the curse, and from the fear of death in hell. I'm a free person tonight, and you can be a free person tonight. Christianity is no more religion. No any ritualism. Christianity is a practical blessing of God. Christianity is Jesus Christ our Lord. When you have Jesus Christ and you can claim all of this blessing of the fruit of the cross boldly. Whether you feel it or not. Whether you Think it in that way or not. God has already provided all of these blessings through Jesus Christ tonight for you. And also I believe the God of miracles. God is performing miracles. This reason I have hope. When I just confront face to face with the wall of impossibility, then I believe in God who performs miracles. So God would always give me the hope. I will never be dismayed because of circumstances, because God is God of miracles. Jesus says, trust in God. Then we should trust in such a God, God of creation, God of redeem, redemption, God who performs miracles for us. When you have this kind of God, you can't help but having the great hope in your heart. 